Welcome to the Bread and Thorns podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Bread and Thorns podcast, a bi-weekly podcast where we sit down and discuss literature, art, media, and other stuff we really like and how they influence the projects that we're working on. I'm Isaac. And I'm Rosemary. And today we are going to discuss... Departures! Departures, Departures is a 2008 Japanese drama film directed by... Oh, man. This is going to be difficult to, to try to really? get right. Yojiro Takita. And starring Masahiro Motoki, uh, and I do not know how to pronounce. Ryoko, Ryoko Hirosue. Hiro. Okay. Do you not and know Sutomu. any nope. Japanese pronunciation at all? No, I'm not Japanese. <gasps> like, I Japanese. know you're not Japanese, but like... We've known each other for a I'm while. I'm whiter than you. Okay, I also like Japanese culture. Never mind. I, I, no, it's fine. It's fine. I was I was genuinely like, okay, he shouldn't have that hard of a time with the names, because like, you get on me, because... Anyway, no, when, okay, when all the, right. When the name has <laughs> weird little things on top, I'm just like, oh crap. So, like yeah. Yojiro is like, huh? There's like two little. That one I kind of just assume. And then I think, that I think it's just. And longer. then Ryoko kind of messed me up. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> starring those people, a film follows a young man who returns to his hometown after a failed career as a cellist and stumbles across work as a. New. It's either Nyokashi. Wait, no, no, no. Nyokanshi. No kanji, or it's like new kanji. I, I just a traditional Japanese ritual mortician. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so uh, yeah, so he is subjected to prejudice from those around him, including from his wife, because of strong social taboos against people who deal with death. Eventually, he repairs these interpersonal connections through the beauty and dignity of his work, vis a vis Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Ooh. this is not a film on my list. It is a film. It's a on... film on mine. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, so I actually haven't seen this film. I've never seen this film before. And so this past week, or rather, it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday <laughs> that I watched it. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised uh, by this film. Actually, yes. uh, I was I was kind <laughs> of researching the film a little bit just to yeah. see what it was, and I was. I was actually expecting to be pleasantly surprised. So it was nice to be expecting to be pleasantly surprised and then actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, about okay, this film. so are you pleasantly surprised in comparison to my other movies or actually because like you think that it's an acceptable movie? Both. <gasps> okay. I mean, I wouldn't I put this that. anywhere that's, near my top that's 50. That's fine. But it is on I mean, this this was a very But it's a really popular film. It's a good film and it got a bunch of awards and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty good Oscar bait um it's very and I don't mean that pejoratively but just just as a term it's like it's a very good Oscar bait um and it okay. deserves probably some of those uh accolades it did win Academy Award for the best foreign language film mm-hmm. um and it won I think in Japan mm-hmm. uh, the picture of the year award mm-hmm. and so there is it's, it's really interesting because there this was film, a hesitant right, right. Like, they, they didn't want to release it new. and then they and then it won a film festival award and then they were like okay I guess this is good we'll release it and then people liked it and then people started to go to Japan mm-hmm. to uh, go to those places so, mm-hmm. yeah. nah I had a, a friend who had talked about this movie. Uh, this was like a, a, a couple years ago, and they had talked about the movie, and I was like, "That sounds amazing." And I was like, okay, is is it on anything?" And they were like, uh, it's Japanese film with like subtitles and I was like oh okay all right, right. that's fine all right yeah, and so when I, had I saw to figure that it out. when I saw that it was a foreign film um that was when I went okay this is going to be a pleasant surprise because yeah. I don't think you're going to watch your versions of like Princess well, this Bride is kind of and like Knight's that. Tale but it's not, not set in like the middle ages but not it's not like Princess Bride it's not a love story Right, Departures isn't a love story. It, it has a love story in it, yeah. but it's not a. It's not itself. Yeah. The point of it isn't a love story. Well, I mean, not a romantic love story. Yeah. Right? Obviously, it's a story of reconnection and reconciliation and all that kind of stuff. But that yeah. kind of love, rather than romantic love, right? Yeah. Um, and it's also not a on your nose comedy film, right? So a Knight's Tale, it's very Princess amusing, Bride. Though. Uh, it is. It is funny. Uh, yeah. It is funny in its own way. But did you it's actually not a laugh comedy. out loud, or did you just smirk? Uh, I smirked. It, it's very, it's very Asian y. <laughs> yes. And so I'm not. I wasn't. 
like I was smiling because a lot of the character kind of interactions uh, felt very authentic to me, which <laughs> was nice. Uh, but obviously, this was made in Japan, so it wasn't like an American film that was trying to cop a Japanese or culture or anything like that. And so, I, I was so I appreciated the film. I didn't like it. I like it. All right. Okay. I should I should say this. <laughs> I like the film above and beyond the vast majority of your list. Um, so, <laughs> like, it would be uh, right okay. now, I think it's like Palm Springs, bottom, right? Princess Bride, number nine for me. <laughs> uh, probably Count of Monte Cristo is number eight. Dang. It's not that bad. I know. But it's Keep not going. Like, Keep, I'm, there, I'm... There's a big distance from Palm Springs <laughs> yes. to Princess Bride. There's yes. a big distance from Princess Bride to Knight's Tale. I understand. Right? So it's I'm not also as just if... like, ouch. Right. It's it's not as if I'm like, it's it's not like not 10, yeah. 9, 8, like, like those are all so, so, so far. It's just there's a big distance between them. Um, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> and then Knight's Tale after Knight's Tale, uh, Count of Monte Cristo, right? Um, that was that no. It's okay. Princess Bride. It was Palm okay. Springs, Princess Bride, Count of Monte, Monte Cristo, Cristo right. and then Knight's then Tale. Then Knight's Tale. Okay. Yeah, Knight's Tale because that that that's probably the one film that I would want to revisit. I don't want to watch Departures again, uh, because I don't think it was that good for me. Uh, this was my so watching it this time was like my I think fourth or fifth time watching it. I think fourth. I did still tear up at the part that I like the first couple times that I watched this movie. I actually cried. Oh, okay. um, there, there were there were a couple points where I, I like there I were teared a few up. Points and I was, I was like, like, okay, like, people are gonna cry here. Yeah, I'm not. I was crying, one of those people. people. Are gonna be, I was be one of those here. people. But um, it was something where I don't like. This isn't a movie that I can just wa- like. You know how yeah how you said that you watched. Um, oh, I can't remember. Like I remember you talked about it was in was it in middle school or elementary school that you came home like every single day to like watch two towers like that was like like one of the things oh, right. that you had done i mean i didn't was, cry like, during two towers no oh actually no because return of the king is where theoden dies i was like wait like i actually spoiler alert no i'm just kidding <laughs> that came out 2003 so if you haven't watched, you guys, <laughs> you haven't watched that you need to find uh, someone who loves it and watch it with them <laughs> but um except isaac no, well, no, no maybe isaac, isaac don't could be find fun. someone who loves it just watch it yourself and, no, and, and love it. No, because they're not gonna do that. Everyone who didn't grow up or like watch it when it came out isn't going to love Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. It is very, very. I found I that it's very rare that. unless your family like encourage you, encourages you to love it, or they despise it, and so you're like, I'm a rebel. I'm gonna go and like it anyways. Like it doesn't really happen. I disagree with that. I think people watch it with all the streaming services and stuff online now. People watch a lot of movies alone. And they get to have their own. Maybe with Star Wars, but Lord of the Rings doesn't have that. Lord of the Rings is on. It's not on Netflix. It is on. It is on Netflix. What? Uh, it's the not extended on, editions. I'm not sure about the extended Actually, editions. To be fair, they probably should. Um, they probably wouldn't do that. Right. Yeah. The There's first time no you watch way. watch those movies, you no, probably no. wouldn't want to want to watch the extended. No, no. You should watch the extended. Well, edition. I don't think I don't think you should. Okay. Just I, because we have a different a difference of opinion. It would on be this. like. It would be watching a really, really, really long film, um, and I don't think that people generally want to do that. But it's not on Netflix. It's not on American it, Netflix. That's what oh. you didn't let me finish saying. Uh, it's not on the United States Netflix. Wait, it's why? on uh, like UK and European Netflix. Wait, why? What do you mean why? Just licensing issues. That's so weird. To so me. Warner Brothers, right? It was no, no. It was produced by Cinema, uh, Cine, not Cinemax. Uh, New Line Cinema. Yes. Uh, and Miramax. Yeah. And so I think most of their films are not on streaming services yet. They probably will go on HBO Max eventually because. That's such a yeah. trip. But. Uh, um, I'm tripping right now. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Anyways, um, keep going. You were saying. I got so crying. sidetracked. Uh, crying. Okay, so even though it's a movie that I absolutely love and adore, it's not a movie that I can watch all the time. And okay. it's something where it is actually better to watch it with people, especially people who haven't seen it for the first time, because then you can kind of like see it through their eyes, which is always fun. But I do, I greatly respect and appreciate this movie. And it's something where it deals with a, a tricky subject. It deals with preparation for and of the dead. And... That's a really finicky thing, and people are really weird about death. Uh, I know that I am a like white American twenty three year old woman, but that's it's very weird 
I have found that it is very weird for me to be so accepting of death in most of my circles. Everyone's really afraid of it. There's so much preventative measures. There's all these different things. Like everyone's terrified of death. And so to deal with the people who have died and to the the bodies, <clears throat> the bodies that remain, like what do you do with them? It's just, it's a very interesting subject and most people don't talk about it. So the fact that this not only is like a good movie, but it's also a well-recognized and, and world-renowned movie, I was impressed. And so I do watch it at least a couple times a year. Yeah, um, I'm probably never going to revisit this movie. <laughs> uh, it was, y- you say that, um, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, like, you don't really want to watch this, like, casually. Over and over and over again. Right. Um, I kind of agree. But what was funny was that, I think it was yesterday, last night, um, while I was watching this, um, I was also eating dinner. Yeah. <gasps> no. Yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I had to put down my dinner because it was like it was it was doing no. funny things to my stomach no. as I was watching it. Because you're watching dead bodies, and yeah. when you get to that scene well, with and the, the first grandma, one, yeah, yeah, with the lady and, and the feet like, and right. the maggot, no, so you have no, to no, just no, 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 put no. it aside. If you have yeah. a weak stomach, there are two scenes that will bother you. Wait, so how did you feel about the video recording? The video recording. The very oh, that beginning. was hilarious. That was okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that was funny. funny. Good. Um, they did that very, very, very yes. well. And then when the wife finds out <gasps> through via the uh, video recording is also hilarious <laughs> because she's just so shocked. She's just sitting there like she can't move. <laughs> she's <laughs> like, just like, what did I just watch my husband like go through? Like he got probed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. But okay, so with this movie. I actually didn't know how well. Oh, let me res- finish my, my oh, list yeah. first. Yeah, yes. yeah. So yeah. Okay. So, so it's Princess Bride, right? Um, and on then Count of Monte Cristo, and then Knight's Tale. No, no, Count of Monte Cristo, you- and then Knight's Tale, right? Yeah. And then after Knight's Tale, I would put Deadpool two. Okay, that makes sense. Right, and then after Deadpool two would be Your Name, and then okay. after Your Name is this one. So this is the top one so far, because okay. Tropic Thunder is on my Wait, list. Wait, so that would be right? my number three then? Or number four. Um, number four. Or I mean, number four. Uh, four, I think. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I but the the distance between <laughs> Deadpool two and Departures <laughs> is quite large, or your name in Departures is is is, is quite large. And, I think. Okay, that makes sense um, though, because it focuses on relationship between like family rather than on the romance. Well, cause I mean, I I I so like it's your less name. One note. Ah, uh, but actually, you know what? Now I have to take that back. I was now thinking that I think about it, that you would really right. You could just say that they're closer. They're 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 much closer now that I think about it. Um, uh, but I I would I do appreciate your name more than this film in a sense. Like you'd rewatch your name. I don't think you're gonna rewatch this, but I think that this is a better movie. I've rewatched your name quite a few times. Yeah, but it's not. Just, I mean, they're, they're like guilty pleasure movies yeah. that, that you watch. So this is it's not a guilty pleasure. I, yeah. I, I, rec- I would recommend this to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, your name to anybody. Yeah. Um, but so, it, but I watch it in that same mode. Like it's just a nice movie to put on and, and, and watch. Okay. Um, but so ah, oh, I, I guess I have to go back and think about it. Sorry, guys. I uh, the analysis <laughs> and gals later. Um, but I do like I do like this film, okay. live action film. I should say because this is the only live action film that I I I, th- I think is very very decent. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's that good for me. They did for actually me. make it into a uh, manga and oh dear something. Well, else. it was based on another thing, right? Well, it was, it was based, based on a on, book. Okay. It was based on a, a book called Coffin Man, and it's the mm-hmm. like tales of a Japanese mortician. Mm-hmm. And so it's based on that. And this guy, the uh, director, I believe, went to <clears throat> went to India, and he witnessed a uh, cremation. You want to drink some water there? You've like Maybe. coughed a couple times. <laughs> no, I just I also I woke up and then I I woke up like really really early and then I had to watch something and then I had to do you had something to watch else. This. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you did have to watch <laughs> this. All right. I did. I was going to watch it last night, but I had like four other things that I needed to get done before bed. And then I was like, all right, I'll still watch it. And then it was 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, I need sleep. And then I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. So <sighs> anyway, but I had like an interview and several other things. So my 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 voice has already been used a right. lot today. And I'm like, all right, it's 
It's cool. It's like almost noon, and my voice is. So do you want to get so a drink of water? Um, I will figure I, it I'll, out. I'll continue your your little spiel. So it was um, uh, after. So this is in Wikipedia as well. It's the second paragraph. The idea for departures arose after the director. Um, oh no, sorry, not not after the director. The uh, the main main uh, cast star guy. Oh, Masahiro Motoki. I missed that. Uh, he okay. went to a funeral ceremony uh, while traveling to India and was very, very touched by it. And then he came across Coffin Man, and which is the book that um, Rosemary was mm-hmm. referring to. And so he thought that the story would adapt well, very, very well to film. So they oh, made and the, the film. Oh, my apologies. Journal of a Buddhist Mortician. Yeah. And then after that, he uh, they decided to, or after that, after making the film, I'm guessing that's when the manga came out because I didn't, I have no idea about the manga. I don't either, honestly. Right. Again, this movie was recommended to me by a friend. It was recommended as a film, and so I've watched it several times, and I really, really enjoy it. It's also something where I don't really research the things that I love until someone else is like, you should check this out. Or like, what? I learned about this cool thing. And I'm like, what? And then I dive into it. Or until we have to do a podcast. Or until we have to do a podcast. Right. Okay. <laughs> hey, you made me study for The Dark Knight. That's okay? True. It wasn't even my movie. Yeah, that's true. Okay? So... And then we didn't really talk about it. No! That was great. We didn't. That's a real test. I'm still slightly <laughs> hurt that I had to learn so much about so stupid, just, <sighs> sorry, short-circuiting my vocabulary. Anyway, I can study, and I do study. I just study after I've realized that it's something worth studying. Okay, so what is it about this film that you appreciate? Or what what makes it number, because this is number six on your mm-hmm. list. What makes it number six? Uh, the couple of, th- okay, so similar to Arrival on your list, I knew that I was going to like this movie from the first note that they played. I really liked Oh, yeah, that the opening soundtrack. scene is quite good. Um, yes. Where you have just the fog. Yeah. And then the the car just drives yes. through that fog and you get that, that yeah. very dreary, um, and somber kind of opening. Mm-hmm. I really liked the... I generally don't like the cinematography for most Asian films. Um, really? Yes. I Why? don't... I think they're very bland. And so they're like very... Like K-dramas and stuff? Or like, no, like Chinese dramas? No, almost all Asian Just all film. film. Um, huh. I think they're very bland. And they're, and, and they're stylized that way. I'm not saying that they're doing it wrong. I'm saying I don't appreciate the way they stylize it. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, so I get that. There are things that I'm like, the style it, is just off. It's just an opinion. I just don't feel right? that with that. So so with this film, it has that okay. very – It's if, if you look at the color palette in all the shots, it's all very grayish, brownish, dark, right? I would say it's realistic. A, yes, but that's not what I watch films for. That's true. <laughs> that makes sense. And so – so I don't I think don't... you have a realistic film. You have stuff like the themes can be applied to real things and real people, but the movies themselves are not. Well, for me, when I watch a film, like let's take The Big Short, right? That's the most real, like in terms of story, right? Like that I, that actually happened in real life. It's yeah. based on a true story. But if you look at the way all the colors and all They're everything constantly saturates, trying to keep your attention. Yeah, it's it's a very beautiful film yes. in that way. It's impressive. Um, they act... The colors actually pop I do out actually at you and drag you watch into that it. Again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but so, but with with most a lot of Asian films, they don't really want to do that. They want to have a more kind of, at least the the way I see it, they want to have a more kind of uh, pulled back okay. visualization of everything. To like for um, is it for emphasis on characters or something? I'm not sure what the know? total purpose is. I just know that I don't really like it. Hmm. Um, and I, I, that's probably why I like certain... Uh, I like anime better than Asian... That makes sense. Uh, ...live action films. There are a few that I really like. Uh, for example, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That oh. film is gorgeous. <laughs> that one is. That's watch. the one with the multiple endings, right? No. No, where they, where they tell the story and it changes colors and you have like that... that that's that Hero. Not? <gasps> okay, that's my hero is also gorgeous so to watch. Pretty. Yeah, it is. Because like, no, Crouching Tiger, Hidden that. Dragon has too many like Jackie Chan move things without the fun of Jackie Chan. I like how you associate all of 
<laughs> all of martial arts in Asia with okay, Jackie Chan. Okay, I could have said Jet Li, but I didn't want to. I like Jackie Chan more than I like Jet Li. I have on purpose gone out of my way to enjoy Jackie Chan movies because he I is I still think it's a very funny and stereotypical it's not <laughs> okay. just associated there's with also Chan. he did um uh, american dragon jake offended. long he did an animated tv show okay and it's delightful he is Jackie a very Chan like adventures. he's not he's not a one note actor he can do a whole lot of things and it's really impressive and so it's something where like no i'm genu- just, just i'm just saying you associated all of asian martial arts cinema with one it's the person. same reason why, like, okay, so like with, with Harry Potter, <laughs> my favorite Harry Potter character is Harry Potter, who is the most underrated Harry Potter character, okay? So, like, I don't like Jackie Chan because of, like, oh, yeah, he's Jackie Chan. He's, like, the only... No, it's because, like, he's actually amazing. You don't have to defend yourself. I just think it's funny. <laughs> mm, anyway. You're getting more offended than I, I, I should be at this point. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so, I don't... Yeah. The, um, yeah. C- but- Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I think, does that kind of. So the reason why I say Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is because the hero is filmed to be gorgeous. It, it, the visuals so are you can you can kind of just make it a silent film and yeah. just watch it as a as a silent film. Like because I, it's I do that actually beautiful. want the story, but yes, you well, could you, make it but you can get the piece. story really well by just watching yeah. that, like just watching the visuals. Right? I haven't you don't... watched that in a while. I need to watch that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, and but Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon still has this kind of aesthetic where a lot of the shots have very similar color palettes, right? But it's done in a way, at least to me, it's done in a way where I, I feel like it's very enjoyable to watch. Um, and so this one, this film, outside of that beginning shot where the car comes through that fog, uh, I didn't really like the cinematography. Interesting. So. That but that's just my take. Kind of makes sense with who I know you are, but it's also I don't expect very much from live action movies like this. That's one of the reasons like right. I agree with okay. you about the anime is the idea that for example, your name which I think your name is higher on my list, right? It's the next one up. I your think name it's number is 5. Your number 8 on It's number your list. 8. Never mind. Anyway, there are ones <laughs> on my list that are higher up that are just the gorgeous cinematography. And yeah, your name is beautiful to look at. It right? is. Just, it's just pretty. It's really, really pretty. It's really pretty. But um, with this movie, it was something where I appreciated. This is one of the few movies where like I appreciated the themes more than I appreciated the color, and so okay, I didn't right. mind that it was very drab, city, basic, rural kind of thing. I didn't mind that. That it was like. Really light colors, pastels and and grays and browns. Yeah, and, and they, they do it on light. purpose. They yeah. do it on purpose. I'm not saying they did it wrong. They do yeah. it on purpose. So that that, that they, they made their point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But okay. So but the soundtrack was I really first of all I love cellos. Cellos are my favorite string instrument, and I adore them. Like technically, piano counts as a string instrument, so I love piano more. But cello no is one just views piano I as a count <laughs> okay in my head I count piano as strings because it's supposed to be strings it's not I don't have a piano it's strings it's not it's a string strings instrument. with keys it's not a string it's instrument. strings it's not a string <laughs> instrument that's like calling that's like calling drums a animal skin instrument it makes no sense well depending on the drums it is no you don't like Celtic call- drums there it's literal it's the you don't animal ca- skin. you don't categorize it that way the strings on a piano. No, it's like categorizing it as a folk instrument. No, it, like you have percussion, you have mm. string, you have woodwind, you have brass. Piano is a percussive instrument because you're hitting the note. It's oh, not, okay, that doesn't make more sense. It's not a string. Somehow instrument. I worked at a music store for three and a half years and no one actually expressed that piano was a percussive instrument. Oh, well. So. There are no strings on an electric keyboard. <laughs> there are no <laughs> strings on me. Anyway, um. But with that, it's something where the soundtrack for this movie is gorgeous, and I do love cellos. And so, and on top of that, so the first, so not only is the soundtrack gorgeous, then you have the opening sequence is gorgeous. Then you have him in this lovely orchestra. They're doing a pretty good job. All right. They're, so, they're good. like the second scene right after, yeah. he's in that orchestra. Yeah, they're in the orchestra. Yeah. Doing amazing. He's like, all right, I'm serious. I'm enjoying this. this that, oh, the other. I guess he didn't get it. So he's, I'm assuming they're not very good. No, no, no they're very good, then or why? they're they're pretty decent. Yeah, they were decent. He's he's the last chair cello. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's the last chair dang. cellist. <laughs> I didn't. 
So oh, I didn't count. Yeah. Oh, I should have. So that was went, the shot. Went back. Yeah, they went back and they went forth back, through the. And then they, yeah. and then they worked their way. He's the last chair cellist. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's not very good. He's, he sucks. <laughs> he's not bad. He's just not no, good. Well, so right. So orchestrally, the, he sucks. The the the. So this is where, like, in the film, it was kind of funny because yeah. I, I am I am a violinist, yeah. so it was very. Um, accurate? No. <laughs> most most of these films um, are not ac- are not very accurate in terms of musicality. Oh. This one is decent, okay. Okay. But he was he uh so when they were filming that orchestra, it was very obvious it was a real orchestra yeah. playing the music. But then when they close up shot on him, it was like, oh okay, he's not he's not really playing. Wait, really? <laughs> um, uh... And it's it's harder to tell because I think the actor is probably I a think real he is yeah he's a real cellist. cellist. But either the way they shot him or just the 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 kind of thing they were aiming for with the shots, he wasn't playing exactly in sync with what he was supposed to, mm. and it becomes really obvious when he's playing solo. Uh, and so it was, it was. Well, no, okay. Later on in the film, they do it on purpose. No, 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 no. There's but, there are two scenes where he is actually playing the cello for them, and it's it, they don't do that. It's not accurate because there's the Christmas one, and there's the one where he's playing, and his wife is upstairs. It's more accurate during. It's the most accurate is during the orchestral part where he's huh. playing, but you can tell he's not. Aww. Well, either I, he might actually have been playing, but they might have gotten the shot wrong. So that's that's actually something. That's, I think that that's, 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 that's what that's, they did because yeah. it looked. Because I know what you're talking about. He's where moving it looks his hand wrong. where the notes are. Yeah. Right. Um. With the correct vibrato and everything. No. No. <laughs> it looked like it. And so, so it's it's very. It, it sometimes so in the orchestral part, it it does look very good, mm. um, but it's it's very weird. Like, mm. maybe he was actually doing it because he is supposed to be last chair, right? So he's not supposed to be that good. <laughs> so maybe he was messing up on purpose. I don't know. Um, but then when you get to the other stuff, uh, where he's playing solo, I was it, really excited. It, it bothers me a lot. Um, not not the orchestral one. The orchestral yeah, one was pretty he's... good. But when, when when he's playing solo, I was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> so I I had to I had to lower my eyes and <laughs> and just listen to the music I'm and everything. So sad. Okay, the music is gorgeous, even if I'm wrong about who's playing it. Oh, but... also that little tiny cello he plays <gasps> oh, so would small. not be capable of producing that kind of sound. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. Yeah. Cause it still sounded like a normal cello. It sounds like a full size, like at least fifty thousand dollar cello. Holy crud! So it's, really, it sounds really, really good. Um, oh. And, but that little tiny thing with all those scratch marks and broken strings and all that kind of—not broken strings, uh, rusty very strings. rusty strings. Yeah. yeah, that would not be able to produce that kind of sound. That kind of warmth. Yeah, his wife would have gotten up and told him to stop playing. Really? Because <laughs> it would have been. I mean, I don't know, but it would have been really. Oh. You know, scratchy violins. Yeah. Yeah, like the cello version of that. So. I've never heard a cello version of that. Oh. It's like a that's deep weird. rust scratch that's just <sighs> like if you lower the pitch of cats on <laughs> nails on their chalkboard, if you lower no. that pitch a little no. bit, you get that. It's not pleasant. I'm sad now. Yeah. But, you know, the music is, okay. is is quite beautiful. It is. <laughs> mm, fine. When they were doing Oh to Joy in that orchestra, I was like, yes. That was cool. I wasn't. Anyway, but um, but yeah. So music, and then he basically you have this dude, and he's really happy. He's like, yes, like I'm here, and we're in an orchestra, like boo. And then the guy comes in and is like, guy who owns this has something to say, and the guy's like, all right. It's At that point, you know it's dissolved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know. You see the lack of audience yes. members in that. Uh, theater. Right? Also, they theater. weren't that bad. It was, I guess, actually no, but they would have. Well, they're not going to have. Standards. They're not going to. They're not going to have a poor orchestra play, <laughs> play bad music, right? It's. I don't think it's the idea of they're bad players. It's the idea of classical music is on the outs. Oh. Right? So it's not. It's not I really... didn't catch that. That makes more sense. I thought right. it was because they sucked, and I'm like, they're good. Why? Yeah, they're really I don't good. understand. Okay. Yeah, because it's like a classical music is not very popular anymore yeah. around the world. Pretty much. It's kind of making a resurgence in some areas, but a it's bit. but it's not as popular as it once was. And so I think that's the idea of it. Because before you get the shot of the audience members, there's like four of them, <laughs> and the and the guy who is the that's owner. Sad. He was like really touched by the music, right? He was. Yeah. Oh. Okay. He just looked upset. Oh really? 
He I thought, looked. I thought he looked upset. Okay, we got to go back and look at that. Apparently. But I thought it was. was in, okay. I thought he was. It's not enjoying like Aww. smile enjoying. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so so I'm great. I'm wrapped up in the moment. Right. That kind of. I can't even thing. think enough to smile. So, but then of course mm. you get that he he knows he has to end it. That's right? why he was crying. Yeah. That makes more sense. You're probably right. Because I was like, why is someone who's upset at the performance crying that he has to dissolve the orchestra? Wouldn't he be right. he more loves aggressive it. about yeah. it? Okay, cool. So that, that was the idea. I wonder I if it was his dream to own an right. orchestra. Right. I, I think that's the idea. Aww. Like, that was his whole dream. That was his whole thing. And then now it's gone because no one wants to I think that's watch. one of the themes of this, too, is that almost everyone who's there has, like, this dream that they have to sacrifice in order to go after something else. And it's not even something that's necessarily better, it's just different, and it, it takes care of them. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit uh, in Your Name, uh, where I was talking about like kind of, kind of the differences between Western attitude of male culture yeah. and, and then no, Eastern I, one, right? Since you said that, I actually watched this movie, it was the first time that I've watched this movie with those eyes, and I was like, whoa. And, right. I, and I you saw it. You see it everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. So cool. Once you, once you understand that, then everything here actually really makes a lot of sense. Like the theme yeah. that you were just talking mm -hmm. about, um, where you have to sacrifice the dream that you love mm -hmm. in order to do the thing that is mm -hmm. good for whatever. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, of course, the, the good message about this yeah. this movie is that both you don't have they don't have to be separate yeah. necessarily. They can actually be be one. Yeah. Right. And it's also something where with like I said, I love – it's not quite a celebration or acceptance of death. It's a reverence for it. It's, right. a, it's, honoring. it's an honoring yeah. and an appreciation of its significance. Right. And I love that he's able to find the, the dignity in it. He's able to find the beauty in mm -hmm. that practice, especially because mm – -hmm. You clearly have like the guys at the end who were like gonna like th toss his dad in the casket. All oh, right, yeah. <sighs> and it was something where, <laughs> like, right. I've actually tried to look into this job and see if there's a way to do this because I, I, okay, I personally do not, I don't want to be cremated, and I know that as far as my religion goes, like we need to bury the bodies. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to be cremated. <laughs> my first response was like, cool. You get to burn. <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, I want to be cremated because there's these processes. Oh, for jewels. Um, for jewels, <gasps> so they make your body that into is a really diamond. Cool. So it is really cool. So what 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 they can do is they cremate you and then they pound the the ashes carbon into, carbonize right. It's, it's, that's the process yeah. of it, and they put it you into a diamond yeah. and you put it onto a ring. Yep. So I want to be the inheritance that's passed down from generation yeah. to generation. I if, do yeah. think that's really cool. <laughs> I like there's a there's a Tumblr post that's like like I found out about this process and they, they they go through the process of this that and the other and it's like yeah and I want my jewel to be embedded on a sword so that way they can avenge my death because trust me I'm not gonna <laughs> die normally. <laughs> it was it was amusing. Yeah. So like. Like when someone is like when one of my aunt, like uh, I guess descendants yeah. or whatever is like proposing, <gasps> get, give that ring. It's Wait, like, you're wearing my grandpa. So if they pawn you, does or that mean grand, it's grand, a type grand, of grand, slavery? Grandpa. What? So like if they pawn the ring, <laughs> they pawn you. <laughs> if they sell you, does that count as a type of like slavery uh, I would come or like, back and be like romantic <laughs> slavery? <laughs> I, would, I would come back and haunt my my descendants to be like, go find go my find jewel. That will that that's actually a good idea for a movie. I do like or, that. I'm or, very or amused story. by that. Like the grandpa that comes back yeah. to haunt his de his descendants because his broke descendants. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to sell that ring. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's my gracious. body. What? Oh man, Grandpa! Now I want That'd to go and write this. Do this, it, this story. Do it. But um, but yeah, and so it's something where he's able to have a reverence and an, and and he's able to find the honor in death and in taking care of the dead. Mm -hmm. Where clearly, as it goes through like half the movie, it's it's this very like oh no 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 like no one wants to touch the dead. Like his wife tells him that he's unclean. Like it's this big thing, and it's like okay, but you have a bunch of dead people. People die every day. Why aren't you willing to understand that taking care of them and taking care of their bodies is an important and should be respected job? Well, he he doesn't get it right until he sees that 
family that was um that the 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 dad had his wife had passed <gasps> oh yeah he was like was, super super angry too and he was right, just like no and you guys late are late and, like yeah. all these different things and then the woman when she, when she had passed her face was kind of not morbid very, uh yeah right it didn't look like the picture it and looked so like death. the the boss guy he kind of yeah. makes her look beautiful yeah. and then the entire family cries and that's what that's the revelation moment yeah. that that the main character has mm-hmm. i shouldn't know his actual um, Mato- Mato- Ma- Masahiro. I mean, yeah, yeah. Masahiro Motoki. He, no, no, that, that's the. Uh, that's the guy. That's the actor. The uh, the character's name is Daigo. So. They also pronounce it. I I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong because the spelling looks like Daigo, but it's 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 like it's like Daijo. Daijo. Yeah. Like there's there's like a longer know. thing. Um, I don't remember. It was last night, so I I was not really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! You're, you're probably right. It was it was Daijo or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, and so it's something where so the soundtrack is beautiful, and then each of the characters has depth. Like all of the main inside characters actually have depth. Like the only ones who maybe have a little bit less are like, so the bathhouse's son's wife mm-hmm. has a little bit less depth, but you still get that depth at the end of the movie because clearly she was close enough to her mother-in-law that she was crying over her like her and the granddaughter but it meant a lot to her right. and so that was a little impressive but I they would actually say have that, that they have they have backstories um and so a lot of you because of the this hour this is a two-hour film yes right um and so they and it's there's no set up. action right no. the typical kind of idea of what action is Not in like really. hollywood movies so they they pace it very much so that you get to see the backstories of yeah. all of these characters and even like through the hints and stuff. So like yeah. when he was interacting with the with the guy at guy at the end whose mother died um, yeah. at the end there. Um, I forgot his name. I, I don't know, know but the name. friend. Yeah. But yeah, he was friend a friend. Friend who's not a friend, but yeah. But not yeah, not really yeah. a friend. Like during the conversation, and because it's kind of in the bathhouse, someone he there, knew in high school, right? It was like he, you could you could hear and you could see the the family backstory of yeah. this of this of this bathhouse. Yeah. and so yeah, yeah, so and it was really sweet at the end with with the with the funeral attendant dude who was like in love with her. But then also like oh he's we forgot still... to give our spoiler warning. Oh, co- <laughs> <laughs> so we we've already <laughs> talked about the actual ending. But actually, um, sorry, sorry it's guys. A, no. One of the move, one of the things that this movie got dragged for is its predictability, and that's honestly right. why it's not higher up on my list. Is mm-hmm. because I predicted the entire movie. Right. Like, like in yeah, the beginning, no. he he talks about how he doesn't like his dad. So you're like, okay, he's gonna have a reconciliation with his yeah. dad. And then in, at the because of the sun being like blah, 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 I'm like right. oh no nah, dude take it back she's gonna die like right. <laughs> I knew it and then I'm, like the yeah. rock thing it yeah. was like a very obvious okay yeah. that's gonna come in yes. like, later at the end and then with the wife too <laughs> it was like like several different things and it was just like this is really predictable yeah I didn't I didn't really like so there were a couple of spots in the film where the pacing became too long for me. Okay. And I was as when the film had ended, I was thinking, okay, what would I do to kind of chop it up a little bit to make the editing a little bit shorter? Yeah, because it felt it's a two hour they film could have that made feels it a like two tighter. hours. Yeah. Um, and so, or it's a it's a two hour film that for me it felt like a little bit longer than two hours. Oh. And okay. so I didn't. I, I was thinking, okay, what can you do to kind of versus like Dark Knight is two hours and it feels like you only watch like an hour, hour and a half. Dark Knight to me. Well, Always feels like I've watched like half an hour after I'm done. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man, like this is so good. It feels like an hour, and then sometimes it feels like an hour and a half, but it usually feels like an hour to me. Yeah. So, um, so the, which so is impressive. The part that I really didn't like about this film was when the wife left him. Yes. Um, Wait, why didn't you like that? Because like, other than the fact that it sucked well, to have that. Experience. No, no, I didn't. Uh, obviously, yeah, that 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 the experience. That that's not why I didn't like so it. So why? I didn't like it because it they didn't really. They didn't do anything with that other than make her realize how important his job is. Like, it wasn't very... What do you think they could have done? If you have a relationship break like that, yeah. when you come back together, <laughs> like, there's issues that, are, that, that come up in the relationship. Like, okay, well, first of all, she came back pregnant. She did. And there was a montage... Yeah. That felt like a long period of time. Yeah. <laughs> and so so they 
they went over that really, really quickly. I was actually without... like, this was the first time where I was like, oh wait, is it his? Right. So, so they yeah, never dealt with that question. That a little bit. Like that would be the first thing that that the guy should be thinking about. Like it's been six. He's months. also just happy that she came back, though. But the relationship was broken, and so when someone comes back like that. Like it's just it doesn't it does there's no I'm so happy suddenly, right? There is a reconciliation process that happens with both sides because it's not as if he di- is going to quit, right? She was coming back hoping the pregnancy would inspire him. He to didn't quit realize that at first, job. though. Sure, yeah, but it they never dealt with the consequences of that. It was just true, right? And so it would have been smoother, I think, to have keep on building up which is actually what happens in a lot of asian families <laughs> mm-hmm. um where the the wife doesn't necessarily leave the husband but a lot of resentment yeah. builds up passive so, aggressive families uh it's not really uh i wouldn't say passive aggressive more like quiet aggressive? suppression <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, suppression of desire um and so it would have been good to of have desire yeah, because everyone wants a fulfilling relationship connection, right? Oh, and so you're suppressing that. And so yeah, okay, you're suppressing okay. that instinct, right? Um, and so, Interesting. And so, oh, man, that, that made me lose my train of thought. And so it would have been better to to have her stay and then the blow-up happen him. after they get pregnant. And she tells him. And she's like, you have to. Right. And then it just blows up there. Oof. And then have them deal with that in the moment rather than have the whole scene where she leaves. Um, okay. So for, for me, I it was like that, that. would have been like more that. realistic. And that would have not had to deal with, is this his baby? <laughs> that actually, they never answer. Um, and so it's, it's very. And I think that would have been interesting because it, at the very beginning of the film, mm-hmm. you have this family that because their, their son is. Uh, is a a tra- uh, trans, tra- yeah, right. And so he, so <laughs> it's, it's the, actually really amazing. The 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 argument in the beginning was the 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 father was like you didn't to the mother he was like you didn't raise him right, and then she was like crying because her son had died. But you know the whole family kind of dynamic, and that that kind of familial or marital conflict would have been really great to explore. With these two, right? That would have been interesting. And so, right. (laughs) Okay. All right. No, I like that. And again, as you all know, my favorite movies are not, well, we haven't gotten to the perfect ones yet. But um, my favorite movies are all movies that can be edited and changed. And their flaws don't make me love them less. They just mean that... This did make me love it less. Well, that's not surprising. <laughs> it didn't make me love it less. Like, it makes me... Like, I was actually thinking about it because one of the things that I like being able to do is with my favorite movies or with my favorite books, like, how could I have done it better? And so going through this, I was actually looking at it and, like, part of it was the color scheme. Part of it was... And it, it, that's also just westernizing it. But... There are different things that I would do well, so that doesn't way have to I enjoy the movie more. Like Hero is not a westernized film, but it's really, really, really pretty to watch. It's not a westernized film? No. At all? It's a Hong Kong uh, period piece. Period pieces can be very pretty. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Well, most of these wuxia Ooh. films are like, or sorry, uh, martial arts films are period pieces. Like you don't get... Yeah. You don't get Ip Man in the present day. <laughs> like, it just doesn't, doesn't happen. Not usually. I mean, that would be an interesting amalgamation. Be very fun, actually. Modern day martial arts thing. I feel like they do that with like time travel dramas. Oh, did they do that? I guess they did that with, no, I can't what? remember. What? Shaolin Soccer. <laughs> I haven't watched that, oh, but that name kind of hurts me a little bit. <laughs> Shaolin, Shaolin Soccer? Yeah. Okay. You gotta, oh, wow. There, it came up pretty. Miramax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a very popular film. Wow. It's a very, very popular film. It's, it's a also, sports comedy film. It's, it's a hilarious film. It's, okay. <laughs> Former but. Shaolin monk reunites his five brothers <laughs> to play their superhuman voice. Yeah. Oh, no. It's amazing. Oh, no. You need to watch it. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. It might uh, it might peek into your top ten because of how amazing it is. I don't think so, but I think I'll enjoy it. Yeah. That hurts me a little. In a good way though. Right. 
it's okay. Go go watch it. Like when when you have when you have the time when you have the spare time, go, yeah. go watch it. Um, but we got to get back to yeah. Departures. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, so with this, it's something where soundtrack is gorgeous. I love the depth of the characters. I love the way that the story progresses. I actually really like the themes that are present in this movie, and I also it is kind of an applicable thing to my life of just sticking up for the things that you know are right and no things that you know have dignity and beauty beauty whether or not other people appreciate them which uh, 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 um, Isaac uh this is also something that I take what? into this of just whether or not I appreciate this song. whether or not you like enjoy appreciate have any respect for the things that I care about in my life I appreciate this film I think you appreciate this film, a couple of my other ones that are perfect, and then God. I'm pretty sure we disagree about almost everything else. Well, I like your name, right? Uh, yeah, but you don't like one. it as much as I do. And I like Tropic Thunder, obviously. See, but you that already liked list. that. That's not something that we have in disagreement. There's, I like there's, Deadpool too. There are a I lot like of... Deadpool too less, too less after mm. I watched it the second or third time. So now he just needs to never watch it again, and he'll still like it for the rest of his life. No, I'll I'll probably it, it, it's <laughs> it's like it's gonna stay at that level. Mm. I I think, yeah, I, I think Deadpool okay. one is better for me, but I I understand why you like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying your opinion's wrong. I'm just, it's just it, again, these are opinions, right? <laughs> yeah, and so but for me, it's very difficult. I do run a lot off of external validation, and so it does actively bother me when people don't at least understand why I like something, um, let alone I understand the things that why I love. you like it. I know. I think it's in poor taste. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the one of the things with our relationship is the fact that like I've been able to work on having a little bit more of a backbone, having a little bit more of a spine. Whether it's useful or not, it remains to be seen, but it has helped me to do that and so this movie he has to have a spine about his dignity and about mm -hmm. what he wants to do especially when it started where he didn't want to do it when he started it and then he fell in love with it and so to defend the things that he loves and to defend his dignity and his honor and this beautiful thing that he has carried into his life it's impressive and important for me and so it's, it's a really good reminder yeah it's interesting um I did like the angle where, so when the wife came back, Mika. Mika, uh, yeah. Uh, when she came back and she was talking to him, like, I want, don't you want to have a job that your son can be proud of? Yeah. That was the greatest bait put on film for, like, in terms of, Asian culture, because <laughs> that is very much the yeah. the, the idea like the idea of why you get a job, why you uh, do certain things in yeah. life. It's it's, it's a very family. it's a very collective idea, right? Yes. I want to do this for the honor of yeah. the, the people I represent, right? Which um, is why the cartoon Mulan is delightful. I haven't seen the live action. I'm Mulan. not going to. Oh, so you haven't seen no. it either? But okay, so how do you know it's not? Live? I've. I watched several videos okay, that like went reviews. through, yeah, uh -huh. and apparently it's like really trash. Like on top of all the reasons I know it's really for trash, being just like ethically reviews, trash, but. Uh -huh. but yeah, no, there were a couple different things, and also like language is important to me. I don't, I'm not very good, okay, with a lot of different languages, but I do enjoy linguistics a lot, and so it's something where they oh, yeah, butchered it. Oh yeah, they speak it. in English, right? Mulan, the live I think action. they, it's yeah, they English. speak in English, but it's also something where like their translation is trash. Like they, like they call um the 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 magic person, they call her a witch. Okay, you didn't have witches in Chinese culture; you had spirits. And so it's something where there was like like little things that they could have shifted to make it way more appreciative. I think of the actual thing about, culture. I think the thing about the witch person was like it is like she turns into a phoenix or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but they could have done like a fox spirit or something like that and it would have been right. totally okay. Well, the phoenix that that they did was like the fiery uh mm -hmm. bird. Yeah, that doesn't exist in no, Asian culture. No. It doesn't. There is a phoenix but in Asian culture. Not that. But it's not that. Yeah. I don't even Okay, I I again I got upset, so I studied it a little bit, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, but I don't really know what I'm talking about. So I know that what you're saying is right about there's the Western Phoenix and the Eastern Phoenix, and they right. are not the They're same not the thing. Same. They don't really represent the same. I mean, they <sighs> they kind of do, but it's very it's limited similarities. It's not the same if you, thing. If you want to do like a interesting, fun, 
like reading for for like what what it what is at the f- foundation of a lot of Asian culture. Um, you can read Journey to the West. Oh, yeah. You can also okay. you can you can find the comic versions if you want. <laughs> they're they're kind of fun. Um, but Journey to the West is basically, um, it kind of epitomizes a lot of Southeast Asian culture, um, of what that the idea mm. of. A lot of ideas that you see in popular Asian culture now, how it kind of formed and, and all that Very kind of stuff. Interesting. So I would definitely recommend Journey to the okay. West. Okay, but so with that, because honor story. the family and whatnot, <laughs> and so it's something where with with the new Mulan, they didn't even have that. Not really. Oh really? Yeah. Oh man. Like they kind of did, but it was like this weird thing of like. I only knew about the Phoenix. And they thing. made her super special too. Like she's this like superhuman thing. Instead of it's like no, she's supposed to be this random Asian girl. Oh, so they adapted Mulan randomly, yeah. into like superhero. Pretty kind of much. Oh, okay. Apparently, it's really similar to like Captain Marvel. It's like Asian oh, Captain Marvel. <laughs> that that would be that would be pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna watch it. Um, <laughs> Neither am I. I anyway, watch it. I'm not gonna watch someone it. Someone would have to have it up, and I'd have to care very deeply about them in order to watch it. All right, you care more about the person that's watching yes, than the actual movie. Yes, exactly. Oh no, I've done that before, many, many, many times. Yeah. So. So yeah, th- this this idea that that Mika introduces, right? And then, but it's interesting because what you don't see in w- this would happen in like Western movies, which hmm. is. The guy will prove to her that uh, finding a job for which their child can be proud is not a good thing, right? This kind of collective honorific idea well, is not a good thing. Do but that. he doesn't do that, right? Yeah. And that's the difference, right? He instead shows her How why the child should be proud yeah. of what he's doing. So it's, it's I think a, that's a better ending. I obviously I do too. But oh, okay, cool. I'm like <laughs> so I'm, I'm just I'm just cool. no, noting the differences in in like how if if Hollywood were to take this movie, this is probably the angle they would go at. Whereas this movie took it to okay, actually, let me show let, let the husband show why mm-hmm. this job is an yeah. honoring thing. And, and I really thing. appreciate, and I also I do really like the dynamic between husband and wife mm-hmm. in this movie. Even when she leaves him, I'm just like eh, okay. Um, I yeah, do actually like really the idea weird. of staying. I think that that would have made it better. But um, I was really surprised that they did that. She also didn't want him to touch her. So it's possible that it was a proximity thing. It wasn't just like, a, like I can't stand that you do this. It's I physically cannot stand being around someone yeah, who touches but there's dead bodies. No, there's very, very little idea of leaving and separating from the person like like the way that she did. They, they, they didn't get a, get a divorce, which is no. better, right? Um, as a representative of the of, of the of, of the culture, but like it would have been like I would rather I, I'm gonna go live at the corner of the house. <laughs> that makes more sense. Right? Um, that I, does. I, I, I don't want to be touched by you, but I'm gonna go live there. There is a line. Stay over there. <laughs> right. And then so so it would have been interesting to see that dynamic play out, play out and then that would have been be cool. Reconciled, right? But with that, their relationship is still. She does. She does make sure that she she's home with the a smile and several good. different things. Yeah, she she's delightful. That, when she does that, don't touch me thing, I was totally convinced. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> she, 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 You're she. unclean. And I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I was like, yeah, that, that would be a that would be a reaction if if you if you're in that if you in that headspace. Yeah. Right. And you know. Ugh. And you've seen your husband be probed. <laughs> but honestly, that was the weirder part. Like, if I was given a video of like you my see his husband face. <laughs> be like... <laughs> doing a demonstration for a prostate exam <laughs> for like the general public, it wasn't it prostate. Would... No, 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 no. I'm saying in similarity, it was... like it would be, it would be like that because, like, anal. I don't think I know that's that's where the fuck the prostate exam takes place. Right, right, but it wasn't. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't yes. trying to do the no, prostate. It wasn't, they were no, trying no, to do that. Uh, yes, yeah. it, they were making <laughs> sure that like he like, didn't plug. leak out. Like yeah, plug, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like it makes sense, okay. But I'm saying like it's similar to like if he was like like doctors were using like my husband's body to show other doctors how to do this, uh-huh. and it's just. It would be kind of embarrassing at first. But then you would probably Then you kind of just make fun of him. Yeah. <laughs> just you just a little go, bit. dude, you got to get probed. <laughs> <And> <laughs> on, like, on live on TV. On live TV. <laughs> but, um, 
But that's yeah. the difference between cultures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's something where it's also like, because for them, it's like the indignity of that. And he's right. also like not clothed. Like there's several different things where it, it's just, it's not... It's not something that's viewed with humor. It's something that's viewed with well, shame. Well, we view it with humor. We view it with humor. But the they audience, view it with I shame. think, does view it with humor. Yeah, but it's supposed to. They set it up throughout the whole space, movie. Right. In that headspace, yeah. you're just, you wouldn't mm. want that to happen. Yeah. 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 Very funny. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, and so it's something where also the little bits of humor make up for its predictability for me. That's one of the reasons why I like it is because the the random looks of shock and like how different things play out and right. the little silly things here and there, they do actually make up for being able to tell what like I was able to predict the entire movie, mm -hmm. which like I'm usually pretty good at predicting most of the movies like that I watch. Like it's usually pretty like, all right. Did you just, predict Arrival? Yes. No. Well, yes, I did, but it wasn't until somewhere between a third and half of the movie was I able to predict. I didn't predict the general call at the end. All right, that's not the twist. That's not so. Really but yeah, no, twist. I predicted the twist. Okay. And I still wanted to watch it, and then I was weirded out because like it seemed like her and Jeremy Renner weren't gonna get together, and I was very confused. For a bit, because but yeah, so I, I like I predicted it, and then I questioned it once, and then was like, okay, cool, no, all right. So yeah, no, I and the, again, most of the movies that I enjoy. Did you predict Tropic Thunder? No, I'm kidding. There's nothing to predict there. There's really. <laughs> Did you predict that Les Grossman would be played by Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> no one predicted that. I don't think anyone. No one he, predicted I, he that. He wasn't credited. Because he surprised like a, everyone yeah. too. Everyone was like, "Why does he look familiar? Why <laughs> does he look familiar? I'm so understand. I'm, no." And it's just like this horror. It's, and then it's hilarious. It's a bald Tom Cruise. Yeah. With huge. And hands. then you're like, "Why am I attracted to this man?" <laughs> Like, I've had people tell me, like, I was so weirded out. Like, I'm like, it couldn't be real because I was attracted to this man. And then I was like, oh, it's Tom Cruise. Thank God. Okay, cool. And it, it like, made more it's sense. It's Tom Cruise. It's because it's Tom Cruise. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah. And so, but the humor made up for its predictability. And it's something where I can usually predict. That's probably one of the reasons why Night's Tale and other films are on my list. Because I watched them at such a young enough age that I didn't predict them. I just knew. So you have an issue where if you predict the ending, it takes away from the experience? Often, if I can predict an entire movie and then it doesn't surprise me at all, mm -hmm. it bothers me. But surprise isn't like necessarily it's just... It's not always plot-based. Right. Yes. Yeah. So the surprise could be... So like with this movie, the again, the humor yeah. was a fun surprise. Like yeah. I, I figured out what was going to happen like almost every single time. And... But I was still delighted. Like I was still... I still enjoyed it. Like I didn't need to be surprised by some random plot twist because right. I was able to just enjoy the film. Yeah. And that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of the movies that I really enjoy, they are predictable, but it's also because then you fall in love with the characters too and you fall in love with what's going on. And that is a big theme for me. And so while I don't always need romance to be at the centerfold of the story, I do I do need to be able to fall in love with the characters. And that's how it works for my stories too, is I need to be able to fall in love with them. Otherwise, they're not worthy for me, which is why sometimes they lack a little bit of depth because I have characters that like I've fallen in love with. So like in my head, I have this well-rounded character that like I know everything about them, but I haven't put it, I haven't put it in words. <laughs> so it's it's interesting to me that difference. But yeah, out of curiosity, is anything in here something that you would use in your own personal work? Because I don't. I was curious. Hmm. Um, and ice processing. I mean, I just haven't thought of that because I watched it last, last night, night or <laughs> two nights ago. Um. Right. So, I mean, I mean, the the the, <laughs> the whole point of our podcast is like whether what, what how these works, right? In yeah. fact, um. This is on your list. Yeah, so. but I'm curious because I have I, I have a lot of things that I can get into, and mm -hmm. so I'm curious if this is similar to or can impact right. so or would impact anything the, of yours. The reason I said that is because like so this movie because I, I think it's decent, 
but because it doesn't really impact much of what I would do, it's not on any of the lists that I would put it on. Um, cause yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, okay, I guess a better question would be, how would you, how would you fix this movie? If you, I, to- I already told you one, it would just be, so it would be the wife staying instead and the little tiny bits of resentment instead of actually leaving. I would, I would recut so that some of the things that are revealed are not so obvious. So one of the things that I think they overemphasized with his character was his resentment towards his father. It was like every 15 to 20 minutes, you had some kind of scene where he's like, I hate my father. And so it because he's dealing with death, right, it's very obvious that he'll, <laughs> he'll have to bury his, not bury, but like do the thing with his so father. So like only a couple times so, instead of like... So no, I would have, instead of him saying it, I would have, because he's in his house, right? That's true. So he could see, like, these pictures or would whatever. Would he have, like, broken a record or something like that? Maybe. Like, do, like one scene where he breaks a record, one scene maybe where he, like, takes down a picture of his dad. <laughs> he throws the rock through the window. <laughs> right. So things like that, okay. right? Like, so w- when he first finds that rock with his cello, yeah. right, he, he's just, like, he just, like, throws it away or whatever. So, like, these visual indicators rather than him saying it. Yeah, right? showing, so, not telling. So you would you would you would still have a certain thing, uh, in the beginning where he ha- he he doesn't he says that you know he doesn't like his dad, mm-hmm. right? But you don't you don't keep doing that, right? So I would have re-edited or re reshot the film where you would have these visual indicators rather than vocal ones, or, or verbal ones. Um, I already told you the one with uh with Mika, and I wouldn't have her leave. I would have the the situation get more tense and worse. I would have the actress act a little bit differently each time because every time until that blow up, she was very, very happy and she just... That is true. Well, but it kind of makes sense though because that's kind of how some people are is they hide it and hide it and hide it until they can't hide it anymore. But in a film, you need to show them suppressing it, right? You're right. So you you, you don't necessarily have... You can kind of see it in her face before that. Yeah, but it's all in these wide shots and it becomes very much like about the scene rather than the character. And so what you can have is you can have these close up of the char- close ups mm. of the character's face th- so that you can kind of indicate like there's a struggle going on with her. Right? And that's when the actors and actresses can really really show off. She's she's very talented, I think. Okay. Um and but they can further show off what 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 they can do um as a conflicted character. Um I would probably not have that female character under the boss be very significant. Like, really? Her story was a little bit just it was too much tell and there's not enough time to show right and so the way that you could do that is like you could have her be all motherly toward him be mother not uh, she is motherly towards him more motherly toward him right you could have her be more motherly towards him but you could also have her you know you could see more of her family kind of portraits and i think i think you do get a shot of it but a little bit yeah um but you could have her more like focusing on that but this is already a two-hour film, right? And so it's difficult to have those moments. And so I would have just cut that that line out of there, like where she explains how she left her family. Um, okay. Because I don't think that was necessary towards the plot of the the, the towards the point of the entire story. Okay. Um, yeah, just like little things like that. That makes to sense. Trim well, that would all pull edit. it together. It would make it a tighter film. Right. So that's that's the that's where that bothers me, right? Because I can from the after the opening, it's very easy to see where the director is trying to pull you and push you to That is true, which is why this and would never make it on me. your list is because you can see the director's hand yeah, and you it bothered hate that. me. A, well, it bothered me a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, but you know, I mean, it's a it's a good film. Like it's it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not All right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are the things I, I would change about it. Um, I wouldn't. I, I do like the the characterizations. Okay. And so I do like the personalities of uh, the main character, uh, Daijo, and then mm-hmm. Mika, and then the boss, and all yeah. these guys. Very, <laughs> I did very really well like done. the boss. The boss was cool. I think I would have done a little bit more, but this is probably just because, just from because I grew up in the West, and so the way I would do the boss is a little bit more Gandalf like. Um, oh. Okay. So, because Gandalf was... is kind of a prototype. He is. He is. No, I'm not yeah. saying he's not, but I would oh, do, do a little bit more. Okay. Um, the, the boss is a little bit uh, very reserved, right? Um, and so when he gives that advice to him, 
Mm -hmm. It's kind of out of the blue, right? When they're sitting on top. It's not advice. It's just like his garden area? Yeah, his garden area. And he's giving that little thing. And he's like, this is so good. I hate myself. <laughs> right? I did love that. Yeah, that, that was a good line. Accurate. Right? But I wish they would have hinted at that personality a little bit more before. They kind right? of did. But it, uh, again, not it was really. hints. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was hints. Very it was not very, very hints. light hints. Yeah. It was. Okay. It didn't really mesh well. Okay. And so I, but I like that characterization. So I would have yeah. wanted to do it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so basically, a little bit more of all the things that they put in there and like a little bit less with the drama that they did try to put in there i mean just it's kind of cutting out the fat right yeah. what what the whole story is the character reconciling with his dad right sometimes so, when you cook though fat is usually one of the most delicious things well cutting out the fat like that's not I needed <laughs> okay i <laughs> you was don't just like want, wait a second you don't want i mean unless Cooking. you i mean it, it the fat um, the fat tastes really good which is why the, the the term is cutting out the fat because you don't want to have so much fat in there that you it's just that's all you're eating, right? Um, and so you're cutting out the fat. So some parts, actually, I might have redone. Hmm. So there's a scene. I think it went, it's when he finds a cello in oh, it's finds a cello finds a rock in his cello case. Yeah. Right. And then that's when. It, the 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 flashback occurs mm-hmm. where the dad gives him the rock mm-hmm. thing. I think I would have had that earlier. Uh, the flashback, right? So what I would have done is I would have had the flashback either before the orchestra scene or after the orchestra scene, right? So like maybe he's kind of like driving home, and then you have that flashback or some something some, something in between. And then when you have when he finds the rock. There's a very, very brief, like, two-second flashback mm. of the rock being handed to him, right? And so you have that connection point huh. a little bit more. Or they could have done it in the uh, opening <clears throat> credits. That could have been the The, the opening credits was that scene that With the fog, fog yeah. Right? But if they had done it before that. No, I think that fog music, scene was pretty perfect. It was. Right. That's why I'm like, I don't think, but I don't like the placement that you picked. I th- Yeah, right. So you would have to do something. Because that's you'd have three to do prologues. Well... There's a so it would be kind of like the the way that anime does it, right? So you have anime where you have an intro scene and then yeah. the, the song. Right? Yeah, and that's that's okay, that's what right. I was thinking. That's why I was thinking before the fog, or you could just do the fog scene and then do like the departure thing, whatever the fudge you're doing, whatever, and then you have like the rock scene as one of the things that's in there. That could right. be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could be cool. And then so then you would refer back to that with just that two second flash, and then it becomes a visual connection point rather than this obvious okay. You so you would want to do this as an anime. Uh, would that I would, be, I would I want like to would do almost willing. everything as anime. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that with Prince of Egypt, so that makes sense. Right. Just like everything would be better. <laughs> I don't think everything would be better, but it's, I mean, I wouldn't do Big Short. That's that's, that's actually the one. I wouldn't do Big Short as a as an animated feature. Well, it's really, really, really American, and it's kind of hard to do American Well, you can still do a cartoon. Without, well, yeah, but you, then you'd end up with like Archer, which everyone right. likes, which is really appreciated, but like it's also something where... South Park style, actually. South Park Big oh Short would be amazing. Oh, my goodness. It would. They could <laughs> no, totally pull it off. I think that, would, that would be interesting. Eric Cartman would be that uh, oh. that that really pompous yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> but so with this film, it's something where, and kind of like that, though, I do I do think that there are hints of this in the way that you write. But it has. I think it honestly might just be the culture that you've experienced and that bleeds into what you write rather than doing it on purpose I guess about like family and the culture like you've done you have a lot of stories that are very cultural based not your culture but like as in fantasy culture and you do kind of dig into that like with um with the dwarves and stuff you have the the what, the last All one right. that you showed me where he was like um going across the plains and that he wasn't found the it was like fear was following him and there was something else and it, it was really, really cool. Why am I not remembering what it was about? Anyway, but like I have it in my head and I have like the but way that I played through when I read. I know no, what you're but I about. but like that kind of thing and you were talk it, it talks about learning about cultures and learning about this thing and how like their views are different than your own and right. it's just but that's that's something that is important to you. And so anyway. Well, so right, so when I watch this film, it's not a foreign culture to me. Hmm. So, but with this, it's something where this, this movie kind of plays into 
my writing in the way that the dignity of some things is important to me. And so standing up for the thing like with quiet dignity, even though I don't always stand with quiet dignity, I'm often quite loud, but it's something where with my stories, whether it's the dragons where you have like this guy who's like, no, I'm not going to be the typical knight. I refuse to do this because y'all are whack. And then also not trying to go be this, loner off in the corner when he figures when he sees what that looks like he's like oh wait I don't want that either and so forging your own path is important regardless of the people around you and then it's also something where I do I love backstory and so part of the loving of the backstory of each of these characters is the fact that I love having backstory it makes me happy like whether or not I share the backstory I still have backstory for most of my characters like the only characters I don't have backstory for are the villains that I need to hate and I do eventually give them backstories. I just need to have them down first before that happens. Otherwise, I fall in love with them too. And then I'm like, they should be a tragic backstory, and this, that, and the other. Well, this and the person doesn't fall have... in love with them. They don't really have villains. Yeah, there's no villains. No, there's rude people. Well, there, there is. There's rude people. The, the, it's kind of like the setup is he becomes the villain to these people, this culture, and then shows oh. them how it's not a villainous thing, right? Yeah, That's which is kind of my problem, actually. That so makes maybe... so much sense. <laughs> That's my problem. Like, I have this story where you have this um, king who he has this amazing family and everything's fantastic and wonderful. And then his entire family is murdered. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. And he, like, loses his, he loses his mind. And then he he's able to kind of, like, avenge his family. And a couple things happen. And he's able to have, like, another family. And he's like, oh, my gosh, like, this is amazing. And he's just like, okay, like, I hope nothing happens to this one. And, of course someone comes in and kills the entire family again and so it's something where he ends up basically giving up he gives up hope of like everything and he becomes this horrible and corrupt tyrannical king who's also like he's a tyrant because he doesn't care and so um he allows corrupt advisors and good people into his into his circles into his uh, cabinets and whatnot and eventually you have these these uh, kids uh, who come in and are like we're tired of you corrupting our system and so kids. their goal like teenagers oh, they come in and they're basically one of those like YA novels yes <laughs> but it's from the king's perspective and i think i actually had it as more of a short story um or at the very least a novel but it was something where the idea of you have these kids come in and they're YA like like you short stories that could exist? be interesting that, that exists those, those should exist right they do exist but they're usually like you have the main series and you have like the short story over here uh, okay. usually so it's like connected like a yeah like you already, you are you don't need any more depth to the characters because you already have the depth in the characters because you understand. Or well, you it's mean adding like depth stories, to like a side right? story, yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, and so it's something where with, with the story, basically the teenagers come in and they're like, "Dude, you've been screwing with our thing. We're here to kill you." And then he kicks their butts because he's he's still king for a reason. He's actually really cool. But um, before he destroys them, he recognizes one of them and is like. And then he basically takes out, like, half of the people in the castle, and he locks up the teenagers in, like, this room. So that way he can... I'm very confused I know. At this point. I know. <laughs> he, he kills all the corrupt people. So that way he takes everyone out, and then he um, trains... He, like, goes through, and he actually, like, kind of, like, trains the teenagers to be able to... Um, actually take over the castle instead of the pathetic attempt that they did, which actually kind of worked because they got into the castle. But, um... And then he ends up letting the teenagers um, kill him so that way they can escape and actually um, turn the kingdom around. And now that all the corrupt people are dead because he killed them all. I see more influence of Beauty and the Beast than Departures in this story. That makes sense. No, I was saying like because <laughs> with this one, it's I'm trying to make a connection. He <laughs> could be considered the villain. Oh, of the story okay. and so i have a tendency to do like if i have a villain then the story's from like the villain's perspective or i hate the villain and i, I mean i didn't mean really villain like he's a bad person i just meant villain no, like yeah. in the cultural context he yeah. would be viewed as villainized right yeah yeah and so with, sorry i didn't make that clear ah uh, you did i'm oh. just saying how with this story it was something where the reason why he, <laughs> he did that though is because he realized that like one of the teenagers was like his kid and the kid didn't die or at the very least he looked a lot like 
um, the child that he thought he would have had with his wife. And so it's something where because he thought they were all dead, he's like, whoa. And because they're they're yelling at him, they're, they're, they're like upset over the fact that he's trashed the kingdom and doesn't care. He actually decides to care and take care of um, his kid, whether it's his kid or not. And so he's able to die knowing that he at least made the world a better place, even if he screwed it up in the meantime. And so I just, I have fun. That broad, that. the broad strokes of it is really good. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I don't think I followed very well in my head what Probably happened not. in between. But because the broad strokes are, are good, I'll give it a thumbs up. Aw, thanks, Isaac. All right. So that's, that's lovely. That's, <laughs> that's going to end our uh, review and thoughts on yeah. departures. Now we're going to go to. Well, actually, that was what you were working on as well. So yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna go to draw from the hat. Draw from the hat, but weird. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we don't have anything to draw from the hat uh, because uh, the way that we've set our kind of top tens lists up, we are now hmm. on. We have two left on Rosemary's list, mm-hmm. and we have three left on my list. Mm-hmm. However, the two that are on Rosemary's list that are left. Uh, are also on my list. <laughs> and so we decided to leave those two as the last two because that we're going we to do. Because we love them. Well, yes, of course, <laughs> because they're on our, t- our top ten. Yeah. And so which means that of the three movies that we have in total, yes. we only have one that we would be picking out of the hat. Yes. And we decided that that yeah. would not be very exciting to do. Do we want to do, do the one, two, three, and then, huh? I have no idea what you just did. <laughs> but... So the next movie that we are going to be uh, looking at is going to be, Ta-da. and I'm gonna, okay, <laughs> we'll do the drums. Do, 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 do. The next movie is gonna be Inside, Inside Out. Inside Out. All right, Inside Out uh, <laughs> is on my list because, yeah. as we revealed, <laughs> there's only three <laughs> movies left, um, and there's only two on Rosemary's list that's yeah. left. And so Inside Out is going to be the next film that uh, we watch. And yeah, yeah, we're excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited I'm, about it. I've been wanting to do Inside Out for actually a really long time. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm <laughs> I'm excited because I also haven't like the second that I was like, oh right, that's on your list. Oh, this is dope. I'm like, I want to watch it. And I'm like, wait, but like I we don't want to watch, watch it, until, it too many times. Right. And so I was like, well, you can watch it many yeah. times if you want. I think it's a, obviously a movie worth watching. I think it's a good many, many movie, times. but you and I also interpret it differently, so it's gonna be fun. Yes. So next next Woo. time, not next yeah. week, but next time that we. Uh, are doing our podcast, yeah. uh, you guys are going to be able to hear our differences mm-hmm. and views and why I am right. Yeah. And Rosemary just agreed. All right, so. <laughs> I think that you are mostly right about it, but no, 100% the right. part where you're 100%. not entirely right about it is 100%. where I am also right about it's it. It's not even in 100%. A way. It's like 200%. Because 200% it, is impossible with this. No. Unless 200% of zero, which is still zero. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 200%. All right, but we do have the dime, dime segment. segment. I don't know. It sounded like a crashing car. Okay, guys, he woke up at 4 a.m., so clearly delirious. Delirium has settled in. A little That's bit, okay. A little bit, a little tiny bit. So, what do you have for our dime segment? So uh, I have a quote today, and this is actually a quote from my favorite book. I don't think you would like my favorite book. It's called The Legend of Holly Claus. And oh, I thought your favorite book was Beauty. No. No, no, no. That's favorite story. Story. Uh huh. It's the difference. Oh, I'm glad you kind of remembered halfway through saying that. (laughs) But um, no, The Legend of Holly Claus is my is my favorite book of all time. I select it, and it has it has a lot of different things in it that I appreciate. Um, Short. Give it. Give me a one sentence summary. Okay. There is a land of immortals, but because Santa Claus had a kid, and the kid was born in the land of immortals, and she didn't die and earn her place there, uh, the land of immortals is cursed, and no one can get in. And so when she turns, I think she's like seventeen, she decides that she's going to go down to New York City and like earn. Yeah, kind of. Yes. Yeah. It's a children's book. Um, It's like a really, really thick children's book. And she ends up. Harry Potter. Sorcerer Stone. Right, Sarah, Sorcerer Stone. Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Because Sorcerer Stone was a it's and Chamber thick. of Secrets. They were they were children's stories, and then as she definitely got, closer to Sorcerer yeah. Stone. Okay. But um, she decides that she's gonna go down to Earth and and earn her place in the Land of Immortals and hopefully end the curse. And so she goes down to New York City, and several things happen, and she For is some able reason, to that earn reminds her place. Me of uh, Hades and her Persephone. Stephanie. Aww. I don't know why. Aww. 
that's the parallel of, that, that because came to she mind. does meet the love of her life down in New York City, and his name is Christopher Winter Carroll. Oh, I thought you were gonna say really that his cool. name was Hades. I was like, okay, no. now it's the parallels too. <laughs> too no, too there exact. is a dark, <laughs> there is a dark being, dark immortal dude who's the reason why the curse exists. He's kind of a jerk, but um, but that does sound quite well, interesting. It is. I really like. What is the it. quote? Okay, so the quote uh is uh from uh a lady named Sophia who's one of the uh, immortals and uh she is uh so Holly Claus is quoting this to the man that she loves because he's in despair over like like the future is set in stone like I've seen the way that like people could go and turning into like just robots and dolls and monsters and just like mm-hmm. it's this tragic thing and like it's robots set. dolls and monsters yeah he created a, a, a he used radio amazing. frequencies he used radio frequencies to be able to like put up an image from the future but it's it's it he, he doesn't know if it's the future or if it's a future if it's a warning he doesn't know i want a film about yeah. robots dolls and monsters fighting I like it out that. That'd be dope. Just like kaiju versus these. Wait, they have versus... that. They have like the there's there's the military one where it's like all the little toys and like the Barbies are evil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I want, but it doesn't want, have like, actual... kaiju monsters. True. I want like real like live action like the recent like Godzilla, Godzilla and King Kong. Yeah. <laughs> That was glad that we okay. Yeah, Kong cool. versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. That was amazing. But yeah, so so he sees essentially he sees Godzilla versus King Kong on a TV and is like, "Is this our future?" And he's all upset. And so he kind of like You've loses faith film? in humanity. I have not yet, but oh, I actually kind of want to. Watch to. It. You need to watch it. I do. So I actually want to watch um, Kong Skull Island as well because I haven't watched oh, that you know, one. No, you need to watch. I was that. told you need to watch all watch all that. three first. All three. What's Godzilla, the f- um, and then Skull Island, and then King of the Monsters. All right. You might not right. enjoy King of the Monsters as much because a lot of people didn't. Interesting. Wait, did you see 2014 Godzilla? No. Oh. Uh, Somehow both my dad and my brother have watched all three and I have not. They just decided really to go without me apparently. But um. <laughs> but yeah, but so essentially I, I will I, I will watch it. You don't I do need like to watch them, but it's just, but it's it's just fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's cool. Point is, King Kong here in the one <laughs> is much bigger than the one in Skull Island. Like he grew, so oh. he, he's he's big in Skull Island. He's big, but but he's bigger. He gets bigger here, and it's just huh. it's awesome. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Point is, he sees this and is like, "No, humanity is doomed. I give up on life." And so. Um, she is telling him, like, wait, no, you can't give up like that. Like, that's not how the future works. So she, the quote is, there is not one certain future that much I know. Each of our lives creates what is to come. The universe is not a clock that has been set to run in one direction. It is a maze, a giant puzzle that changes and grows each time a player takes one path over another. Every time you make a choice, you make the future. And it's, uh, the book's by Brittany Ryan, so technically it's her quote. But with this movie it's something where each choice that he makes pushes him towards i don't know towards his heart towards his dignity towards actually being able to have honor when he had hoped to do it in other ways and so i just i appreciated that especially with the way that the other people in the town like regard him and that i also just really love this book and i really like this quote and it is one of the way like that is honestly like how i how i see time like, we experience it usually in a linear way. It's one of the reasons why I liked Arrival so much, honestly, is part is it like this book probably has some responsibility for why I liked that movie is because of the fact that it's like, wait a second, just because we're experiencing time in a linear way doesn't mean that our choices don't affect things that aren't linear. And uh, I just really liked that. Anyway, so that's 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 my quote for the day. I'm just thinking about Godzilla versus Kong. Now. Oh, d- <laughs> <laughs> and with I that, do actually want to watch it. But yeah, so with that, we are good for today. Yeah. We will see you guys next time Beep. with Inside Out. Do, 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 do. See you guys later. Bye.